welcome to Ladies of Another View on Beck. I am Mary and I'm joined today by Carmen and Jan and Representative Jeff Magram. So if you think you're seeing double from Friday, you're not. <laughs> Jeff just had so much more to say that uh, we invited him back on. It's uh, going to be kind of a full day today. We're also going to dig into the WHO and what's going on over in Switzerland with the World Health Organization. They're having a meeting this week, and there's a chance that we could lose our sovereignty when it comes to our medical decisions. If uh, anyone wants to declare a, uh, an emergency, boom, they have the ability to have us all confined. So, so much to talk about, but uh, we'll get to that later. And then also, this is the week leading up to Memorial Day. Now, last week was um, the military appreciation for the whole week, and now this week we're leading up to Memorial Day. And so we're just gonna, you know, talk a little bit every day as to why it's so important to honor our veterans and what they have going on in their lives leading up to Memorial Day next Monday. Right. And to distinguish the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day and Military Appreciation Week, all of those are different. Or right. it's simply not a barbecue day. It's not yeah. a three-day weekend. It has nothing to do with barbecues. If you end up barbecuing on Memorial Day, that's up to you. But we cannot forget what the whole meaning is behind that day. Right. So, sure. Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thanks again, ladies. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the important issues in the in the campaign this year. Well, and, and it's so important because there's so much garbage going on, and I just really thought it was the Democrats that re that um, attacked Republicans, but it's not. It's Republicans or the swamp attacking good patriotic people, right. and so. You know, I guess, you know, whenever you have someone who's going to, your competitor is always your competitor, whether it's NBA or football or whatever it is, you always have a competitor. But when it gets dirty, that's what I don't like. That's the part that's so frustrating to me. And it's just starting to get dirty. Or I shouldn't no. say it's just starting to, it's always been dirty, but it's just getting dirtier, shall we say? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're really ramping up the dirty campaign just leading up to the primary here, of yeah. course, because... They they did a poll in our area and apparently I was quite and had quite a lead on the uh, opposition so they're really doing the slander campaign and I think that was really the people that wrote the laws before I've ever been involved were thinking about the future because there's a uh, 16.1 in the uh, in the North Dakota Century Code that covers deceiving campaigns and. Uh, this is what they're doing now is attacking, but they're taking uh, parts of a bill as we discussed last week. Now today I had a comment that they said, oh, now they're saying you don't support the NDSU extension budget. And I, I said, well, if you realize the NDSU, you, your university system has a budget and, and the extension service is part of that. And so to say that I don't support the extension service, it's a lie. Because I've always supported it when I was county commissioner and, and as a state house of representatives, I've always supported it. But I don't support NDSU taking money and giving it to Planned Parenthood. I don't support them overpaying their staff way above what the average North Dakotan makes. I don't support them promoting the what I would call a religion of of Darwinism, I don't support any of that, and so, but I do support parts of the bill. But I always say, if you have a sandwich, and it's a really good-looking sandwich, but you know there's a little dog doo-doo in there, <laughs> is it still a good sandwich? Would you eat it? Right. No. And I say no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna vote on bills. Just they, and then they try to bully you now, like, well, you didn't support it. Well, I I didn't support it because. There's things in there I don't like. And, and when I ran for office, a lot of the people that supported me, that's what they wanted. They said, don't go up there and vote for all the spending. And we see record spending by the state of North oh, Dakota yeah. with no tax relief. We're not getting any property mm -hmm. tax relief at all. And, of course, um, I am being targeted by the governor for various reasons. One of them was we had the, the bill that prohibited mask mandates by the state. Then he vetoed the bill. Then, he t then of course, we got enough people involved. And it wasn't us, but the people really stepped up and helped. And, and, they, and they, we overrode the veto. And so 
and, and he's targeting my fellow colleague Jeff Hoverson up in Minot with the same exact attack. And mm. so he's targeting people that are in the route of the new CO2 pipeline he's trying to champion. And uh, that comes, there's about 75 miles of that pipeline that comes through District 8. And he apparently feels like I'm not going to be supportive of it, which I haven't been sold on it yet. But he, he's apparently targeting me as well as Sebastian Ertelt in District 28 because there's about 75 or 80 miles of CO2 pipeline going through my old district of 28. So these are some of the things that are happening where we have a governor targeting legislatures, which is in violation of Article 5, Section 10 of the Constitution. And then the way they're doing it, in my opinion, is in violation of 16.1-10 of the Century Code. And so we have a press conference this coming Thursday at 4 o'clock in Memorial Hall of the Capitol. And we're hoping to get a lot of people there to support us in doing, maybe looking at what's really happening, where's the money coming from, where's it going, uh, who's behind it all? Is it just the governor? Is there the Chinese government involved, Bill Gates? We know there's some very wealthy players and uh, governments that are sticking their nose in North Dakota politics. And what's really frustrating is, so we as a legislature designed or redistricted the state for the people. We divided the district, made districts that are based on 16,500 people, give or take a 5%. And so, so the people have their voice. The legislator is the people's part of the government. And so we, do, we did this in November, and then we have what we call our endorsing convention. So, so the people actually come together in their districts, whether they're Democrat or Republican, and they pick the people they want to represent them on the state level. The people that they have vetted, they've listened to them talk, they've, they know who they are, and they vote for who they want to endorse to be their legislator. Now we're seeing this governor actually sticking his nose into these districts. Like in my district, there was 252 voters for the Senate race. I had 205 votes, which is 82%. It was the most lopsided victory in the state of North Dakota, one of the most attended conventions. There may have been one more that had more attendance than us. But so now he's saying those people's opinion means nothing? Right. They actually took that Saturday, drove to Hazleton, listened to the candidates. We had people all the way from Wilton and the South Dakota border all came to Hazleton, which is very centrally located, and took the time to listen to the candidates. We were there five hours. We, they vetted us. They voted. And anyway, it's, it's sad the way they're, he's sticking his nose and, and saying the people don't know what they're doing or what. So basically, he's endorsing candidates that, that your district did not endorse. And he's trying, he's dumping money into it. Do you have proof that he's dumping money into it? Well, we know that he's funding the Dakota Leadership Pack. And, and that's the one that is, he's using to promote the other candidates. Mm -hmm. Last election, he literally endorsed and came out and said these, it was such, so deceiving because he said, this is your endorsed District 28 team, which it wasn't. I had been endorsed last time as well. And they, they created their own team and said, this is your endorsed District 28 team endorsed by Governor Doug Burgum. It, and people were calling me and saying, hey, I thought you were the endorsed candidate for the House of Representatives. I said, I am. And they said, well, it says they're the endorsed 28 team. I said, read it again. It's endorsed by Governor Burgum, not by the people of District 28. But the people of District 28 said, no, we're not going to, you're not picking our legislator. We want Jeff Magrum. So they oh, elected okay. me back in. Mm -hmm. And overwhelmingly, I ended up being the, the, the largest vote getter in the Wonderful. House. So. All right, we've simply run out of time. It's great to have you back again, Jeff. But uh, people, we need to get out and vote. So come June, go out and vote for who you think is best.